Everybody, welcome back to the shop. So in the spirit of top 10 tool videos, which seem to be a very popular thing lately, I am gonna show you 10 of my favorite tools that most of you probably haven't seen before. So these are kind of oddball tools, but they get a lot of use in my shop. I'm gonna share how we use them and why I think they belong in the top 10 list of oddball tools like me. So from our top 10 tools, the first one we're gonna do is actually one I've shown before a few years back. And I wonder if there's a couple of you that remember this one. It is called a rototape. Now I've made a couple modifications to it. We use this quite often when we're doing radius work. I'm gonna show you how it works, show you the modifications I made that made it even better, and then we'll move on to number two. So the rototape is basically exactly what it sounds, roto, so for round, so for marking out large circumferences or circles, and it's a tape measure. So if I bring my tape down to the six inch mark and just lock it in place with this little lever, it's got a push pin, I can push that in to the material and then just hold it taut and I can mark really accurate circumferences. And you know, that's great, but there's a lot of tools out there that do this. But in this case, I can go all the way up to over four foot. So I can mark it over an eight foot radius with this rototape. Now the modifications I made to it are pretty simple. When it came, it comes with this and then you put a little piece of lead in here and you tighten it down in this little hole. And A, didn't really care for that and you had to have these little pieces of lead hanging around. So what I did is I just drilled the hole out just enough that a Pika pencil will fit in there. And then I put a little set screw in here that I can just thumb tighten if I wanted to hold it in place. But in most cases with smaller circumferences, I leave it a little bit loose so this spins in here. And when I'm doing larger stuff, then I lock it down because then I don't care if it rotates so much or not. Now this pin can be either driven in by hand if you're gonna hold it, that's fine. But if you have to walk away from it, you can just tap it with a hammer and it locks it down into that center point. Makes for making large circles really easy in a very nice compact form. When you're setting the measurement on it, you'll see there's a little cutout right here. And that little cutout is where you wanna put your measurement, not here on the end. So if I wanted a five inch circumference, I would put the five inch mark right inside that little cutout and then mark out my circumference. Ten inches. Next up is this crazy little thing. Now I know this looks like a marking gauge to you guys, and it is. But in this case, it's all business up front and party in the back. Just like your traditional marking gauge, you set it up the same way. If you're doing dovetails, you know how to do it. And then it works just like it's supposed to. But on the back side, it's got rollers. So this is called a roller marking gauge. And these little rollers are great for using straight lines with a pencil. So if you didn't want to put a scribe line in and wanted to use a pencil, you can just add your Pika pencil right back here, lock it in place, and then use the rollers on the front to mark a depth. And just scribe a pencil line. Now the reason these two rollers are set apart like that is for marking radiuses. You can also very accurately go around a radius and mark the inside of a radius, or in some cases, the outside of a radius if you were inside of a diameter. This thing probably gets used more than anything else in my shop as far as marking tools for marking gauges or radiuses. Even though this one isn't probably the most versatile of the things that we're gonna take a look at today, it's definitely one of those things that when you need it, you need it. And it's worked out really well for us and I like the fact that I'm killing two birds with one stone and it's relatively inexpensive. I think I paid like 30 bucks for this back in the day. I'll find a link for it and put it in the description box below as long, along with all the other stuff we're taking a peek at today. That's our first two, let's move on to number three. These little guys are wire snippers. Now it's a combination wire snipper, wire stripper. Now out of our selection of tools today, these are one of my favorites. These are the five inches. We have some six inch ones laying around here, but they're great. You just come over, you snip off what wire you need, then you take the back end of it, you slide it in and just hold down and it strips it. I use these more than any other wire cutters and strippers in the shop, just because it's right there when I need it. I don't know what else to say about them. It cuts wire and then it strips the wire. It does a very fast and efficient job of it. Two sizes, both five and six inch, and for under $20, you might as well have them around the shop. So the next up in my top 10 tools that we use all the time and they're a little bit oddball that some people don't know about are brad point drill bits. You guys probably know about brad point drill bits. 
but do you know that they make stub nose brad point drill bits that have a quarter receiver on the back side so you can use them in your drivers instead of your drills all of these only cut an inch and a quarter deep and to be fair most of the time when i'm drilling holes with a drill it's just to get through some plywood or something simple so i grab these all the time they're inexpensive they're super handy to use. Not a lot of people know about stub nose brad point drill bits with the quarter inch shank. At least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. If you knew about these, comment down below. I can demonstrate them for you. Let's just, let's drill a hole, Maggie. Demo complete. That's it. Stumpy brad point drill bits you can put in a driver. I know it doesn't sound very exciting, but they do come in handy around the shop. They're nice to keep next to the drill and they're only cost like 15 bucks for a set, which is cheaper than a good set of Brad Point drill bits. I like to call mine Stumpy Nubs. This one I feel slightly silly about because we've all seen extensions before. This is just a drill bit extension, but this one has a secret. This particular one is eight inches right now, but if I need something longer, now I have 10 inches. And if I need even longer, 12 inches. Sometimes I put my stumpy nubs in my 12 incher and drill a hole. All kidding aside, these are great little accessories to have around the shop, especially for those hard to reach places that are just you know way back there. Now this isn't something you're probably gonna use every day, but when you need it, you need it. And not having to buy two or three different sizes is awesome. 8 inches to 12 inches just by pulling a button, pushing, pulling, pushing, pushing, pulling. 8 inches to 12 inch extension just by pushing a button. Super easy, super great to have, and this is made by Wood Owl, so you know this is a high quality piece of equipment right here. Next up on our top 10 list isn't really a tool, but it goes on tools. I hate power cords, and this helps me get rid of them. When I say I don't like power cords, that's an understatement. I really, really don't like power cords. They get in the way, they drag on the floor, they make it difficult to put tools in storage. Most of the tools in my shop do not have power cords. The only thing I leave power cords on are things like dust collectors and you know those large form tools. Everything else has these connections on the end. This might void a warranty on a tool. So if that's an important thing to you, you may wanna reconsider using this before you start you know, lopping off all your power cords. In my case, I care more about the convenience and the storability and the ease of use than I care about the potential of maybe needing a warranty claim. To use these, the first thing you need to do is carefully remove the excess power cord from your tool. Warranty voided. So we've got it installed and I've got my retractable cord right here. Just plug that sucker in and see how she runs. Next up, how to install bench dogs on your workbench. So this is really one of my favorite upgrades to tools. I hate cords and managing cords. Now, again, there's that caveat. If you have to balance it out with the whole, hey, am I gonna avoid my warranty if that matters to you, um, don't do it. But if you are interested, you can find these in a link in the description box below. All right, next up and number seven on our top 10 list are these corner clamps. Now, I literally bought these thinking that these were kind of gimmicky and junky and I probably wouldn't use them, but because I'm curious and I, they look cool, I bought them. And I find myself using them more and more. They're actually really handy and at $13 a piece, fairly inexpensive as the way corner clamps go. Well, integrated clamps anyway. Let me show you how they work. So one of the things I like about these is that once you put the clamp on, you could still move it slightly. It's not like this jaw grip on it. And that's kind of important when you're adjusting the corner to get those corners lined up really, really well. So you simply start by putting the piece in, push the clamp over to there and lift up on the lever. You can do that on both sides. And right, like I said before, I'm not really worried about lining up now. It's not super easy, but it's easy enough that you can push on it with your thumbs to move it. And then you get the next piece in, line that up as well, and throw a clamp on it. And that right there locks everything in place. So in this case, if we're doing butt joints, we could either do pocket holes to assemble this, or we could drill some through holes with some covered screws, like, you know, a dowel or something. 
and we would be done. Number eight is a drill and plug set. I know you've heard of plug cutters and how to use them when you're plugging drill holes or you know blemishes in a piece of material. But this plug cutter is a little different. I'm gonna bring you over here nice and close so you can see it. We're gonna put some screws in our little one-sided drawer box. Now the one thing to keep in mind is that these two go together because they're metric. So six millimeter and six millimeter and they don't come in standard sizes. But when you're adding screws in and you wanna plug it or cover them, these make a nice duo and they're a good team to have in your arsenal. To use them, it's simple. Start out with your countersink, find your hole position and drill the hole. Take your wood screws, dip them in a little screw wax so you don't have any difficulties running into the material. Now this isn't necessary on walnut, but it's a good habit to get into. Now if you look at the geometry on this plug cutter, there's really only one cutter I had on this. Now it's super easy to use, goes right in, there's no bouncing around, and something really fun happens after you use it. Watch how easy these plugs come out. A little too easy. Dab a little glue in your hole and then you can line up the grain and it goes in nice and perfectly and it is a perfect fit every time unless you break it off like a dumb in the middle of recording the video and probably have to do that again to show you guys that it's a perfect fit. And although this is not part of today's video, it gives me a chance to show you my absolute favorite wood filler on the planet is good filler. So if you mess up, keeping these two together all the time, you're gonna get really good results with your drills and your plugs. And it's just nice to have. I always know if I've got some, that operation to do, these two are together. I'm not hunting out a drill size or then a plug cutter size. They just live in a happy little box all by themselves until I need them. Next on the list is this. No, not the drill press vise. What's under the drill press vise. Now this is a new to the market product from MagSwitch that I freaking love. But for me to show you about it, we kind of got to go over to the drill press. Come on, let's go. So typically on a drill press vise, you're going to just lay it down here and either hold it in place, clamp it in place, or you'll use these in slots in here to bolt it in place. What's really nice about this is I can position this anywhere and I lock it down simply by turning the magnets on, which makes it really easy to adjust. Now that's the purpose of it, but one of the side effects I guess about this, and the thing I probably love the most, is that I no longer have my drill press vise handle bumping into the drill press. So I don't have to like sit here like this and turn it in and then actuate it to clamp it down. I can literally just flip the whole thing with my finger, which makes it faster and easier to use. And I love that. The other thing that's super handy about this is I can adjust it anywhere I want to just by moving it around, lining up my drill hole or my hole, and locking it in place. It's as simple as that. I don't have to handhold this. It's nice and secure and I don't have to move my drill press bed around to try and line it up. It's just right there, Johnny on the spot, and I can drill a hole. When I'm done, I don't have clamps to deal with or bolts I have to take out and I don't have the chance holding this by hand, especially if I'm drilling something large. I simply unlock it, move it out of the way, and then I'm ready for the next MagSwitch drill press accessory, like my MagSwitch fence. Last but not least in our top 10 oddball tools are these rasps. Now these do look kind of odd. They don't look like a traditional rasp. Now by looking at these, you can tell them they get quite a bit of use around the shop and they do get some buildup, but it's really easy to clean them. And just like that, they're good as new. Now what I really like about these, and this is one of the things that I don't think I've seen discussed before, is that these cut in both directions. Now with traditional rafts, you're pretty much stuck going in one direction. But with these, they cut in both directions, functionally doubling the cut capacity and speed of cut with the rafts itself. So now I can move down to a, another one that's a little bit more fine. Clean it up real quick. And just like that, I've got that done. And then move down to an ultra fine. Now just hit it with my 80, 120, 150, and I have a nice sanded edge. These cut saws make really short work of shaping material. Really hope you enjoyed today's top 10 oddball tools. 
You know, if you have an oddball tool that you use in your shop, you don't see in other people's shop, I would love to hear about it. Throw it down in the comment section below. And if you've used some of these tools, tell us about your experience and what you thought about these particular tools. Adding to that conversation really makes a difference for other woodworkers who take the time to read the comment section. Now, if you're not already subscribed, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you get notified when we put up more top 10 videos and build cut videos and CNC videos. We put out a lot of fun content that's educational, and we hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.